How do you do? Graham Murphy, I'm a product manager here at Tech Reynolds. Today we're going to have a look at the new GE um, uh, ultrasonic fly meter, the PT900. This device uh, communicates via Bluetooth to, the, to an Android device. Okay, first thing we've got to do is configure the PT900 and in order to do that we need to connect to it. Now, here's, I'll turn the instrument on, <coughs> hit the on switch, green light, we have to wait for it to uh, boot up. Now, um, here's the, uh, the software, this P uh, Transport PT900 software. So I'll open that. Now, at the moment, I've already pre-paired these two devices. This is saying we're not yet paired, so I'm gonna to ask us if we can find it. And lo and behold, we've found it, etc. So we now go next and it will pull all the information out and the configuration of it. So here we are. Now we need to program the instrument, so as we select the program here, we're going to set up channel one. Now we've got to enter in some of the parameters here. Now we happen to have a PVC pipe, so the pipe material, so you can see there's a series of menus, pipe, fluid, transducer, placement. So the first one is telling it all about the pipe. We're using a PVC pipe there we go there. Um, the outer diameter of that is um, uh, 63 millimetres, I believe, 63 millimetres. And the wall thickness happens to be four. So it happened to be already there, but so I'll enter it again anyway. Right, now having done that, we now have to talk about the fluid. The fluid happens to be water. Yep, easy enough. And the temperature's fixed, and the temperature of the water being pumped was estimated at 20 degrees C. Again, it's already there, so I wouldn't have normally needed to enter that. A couple of other parameters here you don't need to worry too much about. Um, transducer, we select the particular transducer type. Um, these all have images, etc. but you have to look at the transducer and it's written on the side of the transducer, the particular tr transducer number. Now, I estimated the wedge temperature. This is the external temperature of the, the pipe. Again, uh, 25 degrees. Now, the placement, um, I have to set, we have a choice here. We're gonna have one traverse, that means the two transducers are on opposite sides, two, they're on the same size, three, they're on opposite sides, four, they're on the same side. Now, in this case, I have to, you would normally use two, but in this case, I've gotta use four because the diameter of the pipe is such that um, they're too, they're too close together. Just physically putting them in place is just too hard. Because if I select two here, you notice the spacing is only 54, and these physically can't fit them onto the pipe. So we've got to use, we happen to have to use four in this case. So our transducer spacing is 102.96. We're now ready to make a measurement. Okay, we apply some coupling to the transducer, just a thumbnail worth. This is the older style rig, it's very similar to the, the newer one, the new one's a little better instead of having screws, clamps, etc. So we've set this rig up to the spacing that was on the, uh, the, 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 the program specified and we put both transducers in. So I lock that in place. For the newer one you'll use a much more a uh, nice and just a much nicer mechanism. So we lock this in place. Okay, we plug our tr two transducers in of channel one that we programmed up. Okay, we can see now that the, um, the transport is quite happy. It's got a green light here. So the flow measurement's being made. We have a tick. That's the um, current sound speed and that's the velocity being measured. So we now have uh, the instrument measuring. So I'll go to, I'll click this button here, go to measurements. Now, um, with the measurements, we can add various measurements. At the moment, we've got um, volumetric flow, signal ratio up, etc. So maybe if we don't want that one, we hit the X. Oh, I deleted an extra one. There's a totalizer one. So we've just got volume and velocity, but I might want to add another one. I might want to record the um, a totalizer. Um, volume so we add that so we can add extra measurements um, when we're happy with those we go okay and here they are live display 
um, if I scroll across this next one here, this is now can either be uh, a live display of the numbers or it can be a, um, a graph. Now at the moment I've set this to 60 seconds but if I need to change that under plot settings I might change that to 30 seconds. I go OK and um, you'll see it'll rescale etc. This is when it initially started and these are the current readings. There we are, it's rescaling itself and they're the readings. So you can watch live graphs very simply change it from there. That's the volumetric flow. Here's our velocity again with a number or a velocity and there's our totals. So we can add measurements very easily. Okay, one of the things that's worthwhile noting here, if you are having issues with the measurement, this last one here, this tells us our main um, issue, uh, sort of the diagnostics if you like. So we've got signal to noise ratio up, uh, down, etc. Now if you reference the manual, you'll see the, the values which these are, the range they're supposed to be in. So you'll see at the moment if they're out of range, you'll of course not have the little green tick. So we can pick up the diagnostics very easily. Okay, the last thing we'd need to do here is maybe set up data logging. So again, I go to the logging section, I hit menu, and we need to set up a data logging file. There happens to be already one there. I'm going to click and add another one. Channel 1, the interval is one second. Um, I'm going to just need to give it a name here. So test 2, oh, T E T E T, that's not good. Test 2, okay, we save that and we want to set there's the date and time that's a linear log so it um, will start and finish and um, there's the start time is um, now and the end time will set it in um, for example um, 30 minutes and we save this right it's now logging now, to, to download these readings, it's relatively simple. Um, we just simply plug, we have a USB connector on the side here, and um, we plug the USB cable supplied with the system into a PC. This is identified as an external hard drive, and you can open the uh, logs with Excel. PT900 from GE, this is a significant improvement in terms of usability on their previous systems and I love it, it's a great system.